Hello everyone. This video is an introduction to ISO 20022. We will see why do we require ISO 20022 and what is ISO 20022. I have divided this video into three sections. In the first section, we will look at what are the different payment instruments including low and high value payments and their protocols. In the second section, we will see a small glimpse of the major message formats and example and typical limitations. In the last section, we will cover the crux of the video about ISO 2022, a brief history, an ISO 2022 model and sample message. To summarize, we will define the various payment instruments that are typically used in a given country, understand the complexity and gamut of the various payments in the financial domain, and then discuss the need for a common protocol, which is ISO 20022. Just a note, this video is only an introduction. We will look at the need for ISO 20022 and an introduction to it. It does not go into the detail of ISO 20022 like the message formats, details of the fields, etc. So let us look now into the various types of payment instruments that are usually available in a given country. We will cover the payment instruments and protocols. Low value payments, as the name says, these are low ticket transactions used by the general population. Any country usually has a banking ecosystem where there is one central bank or sometimes called as the reserve bank and various banks or financial institutions which are governed by the central bank. That's what I have depicted at the bottom of the screen. This reserve central bank also may act as a broker for communication between the banks. Banks act as the payment instrument providers to the citizens. Now let us look at the various retail payment instruments. Firstly, the ATM and the POS network, where there is a common scheme that interconnects the banks and the payment cards are issued by the banks are used as the payment instruments at the ATM or the POS machines. The scheme and network infrastructure is an important institution that is depicted as the cloud there. Second one is one of the oldest payment instrument, which is the check based payment. Every country would have their own check clearing house, which helps the banks to work between them and clear the checks. The third one uh, is about two to and a half decades old, uh, where there is an electronic transfer system where the account holders can transfer the money to other accounts in the same or other banks using an electronic transfer method, typically using a web portal or mobile banking, etc. These electronic transfer systems has also been extended for mobile based QR transfers. The next one is ACH or ECS that is automated clearing house or electronic clearing system, which is typically used for recurring or bulk payments. For example, the EMI payments that we do or the salary payments, etc. Every country which hosts an ECS or an ACH would have their own clearing house, which acts as an interface between the banks. Lastly, cash, which I guess is the oldest, which again is provided by the central bank and the banks to the population. To summarize, when it comes to low value payments in a given country, we would have card network, we would have a check clearing house, we would have an electronic money transfer system, an ACH, uh, automated clearing house, and cash, etc. So these are all the low value payment instruments that are provided. This table provides a small glimpse the gamut of the various protocols used in the low value payments. In the card and ATM world, we know that ISO 8583 is one of the predominant uh, protocol and a lot of ATM specific proprietary protocols. When it comes to electronic transfer, there are protocols like SFMS in India and across the world, uh, majorly Swift MT is used. For cash and clearing management, uh, Swift MT is used and there are systems like Twist that also provide uh, the service. 
for check clearing every country have their own system and specific protocols uh, typically file based exchange so we have just taken a small sample in the various protocols in low value payments this are the number of protocols that are used in the low value payments now let's look at some high value payment systems again there is a central bank and various banks surrounding them the first high value payment system that i'm going to talk about is forex clearing these could be typical consumer or corporate foreign exchange transactions that are done every country would have their own forex clearing house the next one is one of the most important systems called as rtgs that is real time gross settlement systems which are used for high value payments these high value transactions can be initiated either by the general pop population companies or banks themselves these rtgs systems have minimum thresholds for the amount of transactions as well rtgs systems enable the settlements for trade services that is transactions typically initiated for the import export uh, cross border as well current message scheme has various types of messages related to trade like trade account opening invoice financing guarantees letter of credits etc so all the trade services the money exchange cross border or within the country is also done via the rtgs channel the rtgs channel also is used for securities securities are tradable financial inst instruments that are used to raise capital in the public private markets uh, they are usually equity debts etc Uh, some of the messages in the payments for securities include order to buy or sell collateral messages general securities messages etc lastly the payments could happen between the banks themselves to clear again a small glimpse of the protocols that are used across the world in high value payments this is not a complete table this is only a sample that i'm showing here if you look at for forex uh payments there are various protocols like twist ifx etc for rtgs typically swift mt is used we will look at what is swift mt in the subsequent slides for securities iso 15022 protocol is used i've just mentioned as i said the few of the various protocols that are used you can refer bis cpmi red book which provides the various uh rtgs systems and protocols that are used across the world now let's have a glimpse of the sample messages and understand what are the typical challenges first one is swift mt one of the oldest and uh, used across for various domains mt stands for message types the swift mt is used for various business domains and are grouped by the message type group that you see on the second column on the table swift mt as i said defines messages for various financial domains like securities trades etc the messages are grouped by the business domain and uh, like let's take an example like mt103 is for cross border cash transfer mt202 is for cash transfer between institutions on the right i have given a sample message of a swift mt where the fields are typically grouped it is called as a block and every field has its own tag like the tag 59 is used to populate the beneficiary details so the challenge with this particular protocol is one needs to know the fields and the tag numbers and the message number uh, and the message name and it's a block based messaging uh, so there are few of these challenges with the swift mt message system iso 8583 is uh, used in card based card based payments and it's a fixed bitmap based message format uh, very much unreadable than the swift mt protocol that we saw it is it has an mti bitmap and data elements and this uh, as i mentioned is uh, much more unreadable and requires a technical program to read through let's see what are the challenges with these messaging systems first challenge is there are different payment instruments and different syntaxes which also means that there are different formats like xml fixed format block format that are used 
this firstly caused interoperability issues so between these payment systems to talk it is not so easy secondly the same business function has various types of protocols that get used for example in case of an rtgs system various countries use different protocols one another major challenge is that fields are usually have fixed length which means that the data gets truncated for example if there's a customer name field which only can hold 20 characters but sometimes the full name exceeds 20 characters causing data truncation and thus leading to data quality issues last one as i mentioned the data is not easily readable by a human or by a machine as well now let us look as to why we need iso 2022 firstly recent open technologies provide solutions for standard problems that we saw the last section like data quality issues easy readability easier automation etc secondly the idea is to have a common protocol that spans across the various business domains like retail payments trade securities foreign exchange etc that is a single protocol that covers the low value and high value payments so to achieve this new single protocol iso the international standards organization technical committee 68 which takes care of the financial services had a new committee uh, it's a subcommittee so iso organization a technical committee 68 and a subcommittee 9 was formed to create the new common financial industry messaging standard the brief history of the various iso standards are given below uh, if you see the swift mt is one of the oldest and most used tool and the important one to note is ISO 15022, which is the kind of predecessor to ISO 20022. It is also based on XML, but it was only limited to the securities domain. So what is so unique about ISO 2022? I mean, keeping aside a common protocol for the low and high value payments, avoid data truncation issues, etc. But the key thing here in this protocol is the actual syntax and the business model is separated. When I mention the actual syntax, the format be it the fixed format or xml or any other format it is separated out from the actual business requirements and the model this was achieved using uml which is unified modeling language uml is a modeling language that can be used to construct and document the artifacts and requirements of software systems so using this the financial instruments and the messages and the data fields were actually modeled UML was used to capture the message flows, business transactions in a syntax independent approach. The keyword here again is the syntax independence. The flows, the rules and the messages were captured via UML. ISO 2022 has a centralized dictionary of all the financial terminologies that is used for payments. And using these defined models, the actual syntax that is used by the software payment systems is derived currently iso 2022 has standards to generate xml or asn.1 notations but the whole idea is to use these models and extend them for any other messaging standard so to summarize in layman's terms a model is like a mold and it has all the requisite information to create the syntax the actual syntax is the idle which can be generated out of the mold now let's see a glimpse of the iso 2022 models as shown in the diagram there are two important blocks first one is the business process catalog on the left and the second one is the data dictionary on the right business process catalog on the left defines the various business areas business areas are nothing but the various functional domains across the industry we spoke of retail cash forex treasury securities etc so these business areas are one level down of these domains so these business areas are indicated by four digit characters few of them are given below like acmp stands for account management uh, pain stands for payments initiation which is used across various domains uh, tsin stands for trade services initiation etc so these are one level down important functional processes across the various domains the next one is the catalog of business transactions 
which encompasses the various messages which forms a single business transaction. If I could take an example, let's say direct debit is a business transaction which involves various messages within it like funding the money from the debtor and crediting to the creditor etc involves various messages. So all encompassing will become one business transaction. So there are multiple business transactions across the domains that we saw or the business areas that we saw. Now let's look at the data dictionary aspect. The first one is the business actors, which means the various parties that are involved in the business transaction. It could be an end consumer, company, financial institutions, agents, etc. ISO 2022 has a rich set of business actors defined across all the domains. The next item in the data dictionary is the message concepts, which defines the actual message data, that is the fields in the message, and the constraints of the data, and the rules, etc like the address of the data or the transaction amounts. So these are all the message data and also the message overall in itself. The last one is the data types, which define the data format of the fields in the message. The valid values, the fields, etc., are captured in a syntax independent way. To summarize, this model which we saw forms a building block for ISO 2022 which is used to create the actual syntax in the end language that we require. ISO 2022 standard has multiple parts in it. The first three define the meta model, the UML profile, etc. The ISO 2022 4, that is the fourth part, covers the XML generation aspect of it, and the eighth part covers the ASN.1 syntax aspect of it. I just thought I'll give a flow of how a message is defined in ISO 2022. This is a sample message for direct debit where multiple messages are exchanged between different parties. This is a sample XML message for ISO 2022. The sample that I've chosen is for payments initiation. The message name, as I, ha as I have highlighted at the top, is PAIN for payments initiation. You can see the various business actors in the message where the second block that I've shown is the business role, is the initiating party, and the address where the different business elements are used, like the postal code, the town name, etc. Uh, I just wanted to show a sample because how readable is an ISO 2022 message. Some interesting facts about ISO 2022 the adoption is still in progress. In case of an RTGS, the adoption is widespread, and in many countries, this ISO 2022 protocol has been implemented. And in some other countries, it is still under process of implementation. In case of cards, the standards for ISO 2022 are still at a very, very nascent stage. So who helps to create the catalog of ISO 2022 messages? So many international players in the financial space like Visa, FIX, SWIFT are members of ISO 2022 who submit the new message standards and then they build the catalog. ISO 2022 SWIFT messages are sometimes referred to as MX, that is SWIFT MX. Thank you for watching the video. I know this might have been a very long video. I didn't want to talk about ISO 2022 without giving a brief of various payment instruments and the need for one common message standard. Hope you liked the video. Please do hit the like button if you learned something new from it and subscribe and share the channel. Thank you.